All praise due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, Allah will raise up by many degrees those of you who believe and those who have been given knowledge. He is fully aware of what you do. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our Master Prophet Muhammad is Valerie and Messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. We are about to start a new school year, and we ask the Almighty Allah to make it a year of hard work and success for all of our children. No doubt that Islam has made knowledge a matter of top priority and paid it a special attention, as knowledge is alive to our hearts and a light for our eyes to see. With knowledge, one can reach high ranks in this life and the hereafter. Also with this knowledge, one knows what's lawful and what's unlawful. The Almighty Allah raises some people over others for their knowledge, making them the leaders and good examples. And thus Allah said, how can those who know be equal to those who don't know? Only those who have understanding will take heed. The possession of knowledge in Islam appears from the first revelation of the Quran as the first verse that Allah sent down to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, says, Read in the name of your Lord who created. He created man from a clinging form. Read, your Lord is the most bountiful, one who taught by means of the pen, who taught man what he did not know. Thus, the first verses to be revealed from the Quran were an order to read, because reading is the first means of acquiring knowledge. Then, the verses refer to the pen, which is the means of recording knowledge. This directs our attention to the virtue of knowledge and encourages us to seek knowledge. Knowledge has a great position, and people of knowledge have a high status. Without knowledge, people may deviate from the true path. Knowledge is the light with which people can see the truth, and people of knowledge are like stars in the sky that guide people. Allah the Exalted says, can someone who knows that the revelation from your Lord is the truth be equal to someone who is blind? Only those with understanding will take it to heart. It is as if the Almighty Allah has classified people into two categories in this verse, a scholar and a blind man. Thus, Allah made knowledge as the opposite of blindness. Sight here refers to the perception acquired by knowledge. The Almighty Allah said, it is not people's eyes that are blind, but their hearts within their breasts. Moreover, the Quran has elevated the position of knowledge, describing it as the authority, saying, those who dispute with Allah's messages, with no authority given to them, are doing something which is loathed by Allah and by those who believe. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has shown the significance and virtue of knowledge and the reward of seeking knowledge, saying, He who follows a path in the quest of knowledge, Allah will make the path of paradise easy to him. The angels lower their wings over the seeker of knowledge, being pleased with what he does. The inha inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, and even the fish in the depth of the oceans, seek forgiveness from him. The superiority of the learned man over the devout worshipper is like that of the full moon to the rest of the stars. The learned are the heirs of the prophets who bequeath the neither dinar nor dirham but only that of knowledge and he who acquires it has in fact acquired an abundant portion. Abu Dhar reported that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said to him, O Abu Dhar, for you to come out in the morning and learn one verse from the book of Allah is better for you than praying 100 rakahs. And for you to come out and learn a matter of knowledge, whether it is acted upon or not, is better for you than praying 1000 rakahs. Imam Ali said, knowledge is better than wealth. Knowledge guards you and guards your wealth. Knowledge is a judge while wealth is subject to your judgment. Wealth decreases by spending, while knowledge increases by spending. Knowledge must be accompanied by certain manners. 
by both the learner and the teacher. At the top of these manners are sincerity to Allah. Both teacher and learner must act for the sake of Allah, the exalted, and keep away from showing off. Knowledge begets a secret lust for showing off, popularity and authority. This may affect one's behavior and leads him to be arrogant. This is why Prophet peace be upon him warned us, saying, whoever seeks knowledge in order to argue with the foolish or to show off before the scholars or attract people's attention will be in hell. <clears throat> Among these manners also is humbleness. Imam Malik wrote a message to Caliph Rashid saying, when you acquire knowledge, let he let he the traces of his knowledge, its humbleness and modesty be shown in your behavior. Also, Omar said, seek knowledge and acquire its humbleness and modesty. Knowledge cannot go with, with arrogance and it cannot com be combined with sense. Knowledge is to be acquired with hard work and devotion to Allah. As the Almighty Allah said, be mindful of Allah and He will teach you. He has full knowledge of everything. It is also said, when someone acts according to the knowledge he acquired, Allah will grant him knowledge of matters he is ignorant about. In addition, acting according to the acquired knowledge is a condition to get knowledge from Allah, as Allah said about the pious man in Surah Al-Kahf. And found one of our servants, a man to whom we had granted our mercy, and whom we had given knowledge of our own. Allah also said about Solomon, and made Solomon understand the case better, though we gave sound judgment and knowledge to both of them. He, the Almighty, also said about John, we said, John, hold on to the scripture firmly. While he was still a boy, we granted him with wisdom, tenderness from us, and purity. He was devout. The Quran reports the statement of the angels as saying, they said, May you be glorified. We have knowledge only of what you have taught us. You are the all-knowing, the all-wise. <clears throat> These duties include also shaping in the cloak of dignified scholars because knowledge has its own dignity. This is actually achieved by dressing well, being clean, using perfume, and keeping away from ins insignificant speech. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, good way, dignified good bearing, and moderation are the 25th part of the prophecy. The relationship, the relationship between a scholar and a questioner is like that between a doctor and his patient. So he should be very kind to him, guide him to the way of guidance, and show the right path to him. Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam said, while I was praying with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, a man in the congregation sneezed, and I, resp I responded with, Yarhamukum Allah, may Allah have mercy on you. The people start stared at me with disapproving looks. So I said, may my mother lose me. Why are you staring at me? Thereupon they began to strike their thighs with their hands, when I saw them urging me to remain silent, I became angry, but restrained myself. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, concluded his, his prayer, I have never before seen an instructor who gave better instruction than he. May my father and mother be sacrificed for him. He neither remonstrated me, nor beat me, nor abused me. In the same connection, there, is certain, there are certain things that must be considered by scholars, including keenness on learning and being persistent with it. A scholar should not waste his time in trivial matters. It is asked, knowledge does not give you everything unless you give it your entire life. When Imam al-Shafi'i was asked, how do you long to knowledge, he replied, when I hear something I have no knowledge about, I think if all my organs would have ears to hear, to hear the same thing. He was then asked, how are you keen on it? He replied, I am so keen on it, it just as 
the greedy who have a burning desire to get money is keen on collecting it. He was asked, how do you seek after it? He replied, I seek after it in the same way the woman with a lost child seeks after it. Showing respect to teachers. The student should, should not deal rudely with his teacher, either in words or actions. Imam al-Shafi'i said, I used to turn the pages of the book very calmly in the presence of Imam Malik so that he would not hear its sound. We are undoubtedly in a dire need to collect all kinds of knowledge by which we can make our life cheerful. In the same way, we should care about the Sharia knowledge by means of which our religion gets sound. We do not have much time to waste since the scientific research process creativity and innovation become a duty so that we may catch the train of progress or at least catch some of what we miss so all of us should have the spirit of creativity and ambition or at least have the desire to get back to the era of our great ancestors who spent all their entire lives in pursuing knowledge and exerted their utmost until reached the highest ranks and became the most prominent scholars in all fields of knowledge. So scholars and students shall both have good morals and their practice shall comply with their sayings so that they could exert impact on the society. When the Ummah linked knowledge with work and morals, it achieved progress and was respected by other nations. It is true that advancement and progress are, are the companions of moral and knowledge. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. <clears throat> all praise is due to Allah, Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our Master Prophet Muhammad is his and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, Islam has placed the scholars in the highest ranks, irrespective of their different specializations. Beneficial knowledge includes all branches of science that benefit people in their religious and worldly affairs. That's why the saying of Allah Most High, only those fear Allah from among his servants who have knowledge. That's why it has to do with the natural sciences, as he Most High says, says do you not see that Allah sends down rain from the sky and we produce thereby fruits of varying colors and in the mountains are tracts white and red of varying shades and some extremely black and among people and moving creatures and grazing livestock are various colors similarly. Only those who fear Allah from among his servants will have knowledge. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and forgiving. At this point, we highlight the beneficial knowledge that includes all what's useful to people in this life and the life to come, be it relevant to Shari or Arabic language or medicine or pharmaceutical or physics or chemistry or astronomy, engineering, energy, and any other kind of knowledge. Knowledge is truly the basis of the national innovative character, a fact proving by the saying of Allah Most High. So ask the people of the message if you don't know. The Arabic word dhikr in this verse has a broader meaning. Thus it cannot be confined to a particular field of knowledge. That's to say that it includes all useful knowledge. We are undoubtedly in need for all these sciences whereby we can make our worldly life and also our life to come prosperous. Today's reality makes it incumbent upon, upon scholars to correct the misconceptions about Islam and Muslims and to disseminate the true Islamic image. We ask Allah the Almighty to make us from those who are righteous, to enable us to learn what we are ignorant of, to make us recall what we forget and to guide us to the right path.